WGLNA Gold League Season 1. I'm your host, Christian Toma. Next to me is David Williams. Make sure to check us out on Facebook and YouTube, backslash WGLNA. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at WGLNA, where you can check out the question of the day. Question of the day is, out of all the different maps in the map pool, which one are you most excited to see played this season? We've already answered. We yep. want to hear yours, so head over to Twitter and let us know. Yep, use a hashtag WGLNA in the comments. Well, David, we just saw Elevate take out uh, Lamp in an amazing 5-2 victory. Elevate absolutely destroying it. So coming up on our next matchup is Game Over versus Simp. Now, David, we saw Game Over play uh, three games in a row in the qualifiers, uh, very back-and-forth games, uh, and Simp, who we haven't seen in the qualifiers, but they are making it in from last season. Uh, tell me, what are your thoughts on based on both of these teams, uh, the rosters, the the newness of the team versus the, um, the the veterans? Who's the veteran? Who are the who are the newer players? The overall veteran is Simp. Okay. Uh, now it's not the same team that we've seen in the past, so it's hard to say that you know perhaps this Simp has won a finals in the past or, ah. or has uh, has ranked highly in the finals in the past because it's not the same team anymore. Half that team roughly half, has gone on to form high voltage, hmm. and the other half has remained and merged with half of Hammer Time, another team that has seen the playoffs. So many of these players have seen the playoffs themselves, but as a team, they haven't yet. But there is a lot of experience there, sure. a lot of overall veterancy, people who have been around for a long time, a lot of star players. So I would have to say they have a distinct advantage in this set, Okay. And I think they're more likely to win. However, we saw some very strong and promising things at a game over when they weren't deciding to Peter Pan <laughs> off some cliffs. But, uh, that was amazing. Uh, you know, who knows what, I mean, perhaps that's part of their tactic, right? They're like, oh, t don't take us seriously. Sure. So, then, so when they come in today, they, c they can come out with their real stuff, their really, really breakout strategy. Yeah. But there's no way to tell until we see, uh, you know, how they actually start playing in this first couple of matches. Absolutely. I think it's a great point that you pointed out because earlier we we're talking about how mind games kind of play into this whole scenario of, of teams versus teams. If you can get inside the head of the opponent, you have a distinct advantage going into this. And so maybe you're right. Maybe uh, just that showing of what we saw of game over the qualifiers, maybe they're a more laid back team. Maybe they don't take things as seriously, but they are able to perform. They took some victories. So I can't wait to see what's going to happen against this team against Simp. Uh, now coming up on the first map, which will be Ruinberg. Uh, what, who, who, who favors who? Defensive or aggressive on, on Ruinberg? Who has the uh, the slight advantage? Uh, Ruinberg it goes to the defense. Okay. Now, like we discussed in the pre-show, pre mm -hmm. the advantage there is for defense, Correct. but it's also extremely easy to make mistakes there. And that's what offense wants. They're not okay. trying to make any serious power play, although the Southeastern cap can be a, a play on its own. Right. But what you want to do is get your enemy team rotating a lot so you can find a weakness and then exploit it. Tank this just out of position. Something along those lines. Uh, both teams are experienced in doing so, as we've seen throughout the qualifiers of previous seasons. So let's go ahead and get into these lineups. Absolutely. Game over, two 5100s, three IS-3s, a T-54 lightweight, and a T-37. Simp with a 5100, three IS-3s, two T-54 lightweights, and a VK-2801. Now that's a tank I haven't seen in a while. Uh, it used to be one of the best scouts in the game. I wonder if it still holds huh. some of its former punch from the past. All right, well, we see a very decisive move from Simp here as they're pushing. Looks like their eyes are on this northern cap, all of them in the city. No one going around outside to even uh, check town or the valley. They're all just kind of sitting here. Uh, game over. If they don't spot someone for a while, obviously they're going to know Simp is here. How long does uh, Simp just stay here and wait for game over to make the first move? Well, they don't have to be the first. They're, <laughs> they're on defense. Simp is the one who has to make the move. Yeah, so, exactly. Um, oh. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it seems like we have a DC, so we're going to come out of this battle. Uh, that's unfortunate. We saw all the players go in, but um, that quick that quick reset. But we saw as as Simp was pushing in all together. What is the kind of mentality of that? Well, uh, it, it's it's forcing game over to come to them. And okay. there's th this is a classic thing that you do on uh, offense is you attack all the way. Uh, you, you have to go hard all the way into the the area where we saw Gandorfo and uh, the T37 setup not not Ganondorf Gandorf. No. 
Uh, but, you know, what, what I found, you were saying it's, it's unfortunate that they disconnected. I was happy that they disconnected because what I was seeing right there from Simp was very confusing. I was oh. like, what are you waiting for? You have to go right now. This, this, is, how this, <laughs> this is how this works. Gotcha. You don't wait. And I mean, I suppose you could have some sort of really meta thing where you sit there for like two minutes and then <laughs> you push. Mind games. But uh, the longer you sit there, the more obvious it is where you are not. Right, right. So in that instance, unless Game Over sat there and didn't make a single move, uh, th that was not going to be a good play <laughs> coming up from Simp, but somebody did disconnect, so we will get back in that match shortly mm -hmm. as soon as that gets resolved. Um, so like we were saying, yeah. that is a very classic thing. You, you attack through the northern cap, and you actually have, you leave some tanks on the cap and holding that corner mm -hmm. from the defense coming back, and the other tanks push across the cap into the buildings where we saw Gandorfo, right, and, uh, and one other tank. Usually it's like 50, 100 or something. Okay. Now there's a lot of angles that Game Over can fire into that north cap from the town that they're in, uh, something that's commonly called Delta Village. Why it's called that is a whole long story we won't get into now. Maybe we'll <laughs> get into later. It's well, relatively arbitrary, time. but it's, it's what it's called. Okay. Um, so they have to come back across that northern field okay. and try and push Simp out of the cap. That's a very difficult thing to do. And if Simp, is Simp's biggest weakness, their their biggest vulnerability there is when they cross cap to get into those buildings like we said where Gandorfo Taking is. Taking damage. If if Game Over is looking at them or they get spotted too far out when they're coming in, which is very common. Mm -hmm. If Gandorfo does his job well, they'll be lit as soon as they round those corners and start coming down that road. When they cross with, you know, whatever the light tanks they're bringing in are, are or even heavy tanks, which is, is rare, but when they cross with those T fifty four lightweights, there's a there's a small window where they could get lit up mm. by the people in the in the Delta village there. Okay. And if that happens, it's game over. Sure, but but game if over they for Sim. <laughs> you right. know, a not, not the team. But but you're saying it's gonna get confusing. Yeah, and they also have a member named Game Over, which is always fun to say. But it's nice. But game <laughs> over, game over, good game. Uh, but but if they do make it past without getting lit up, then they have a, then you would say that the advantage would be in Simp's favor for holding that northern cap, getting members into the town, and now it's up to Game Over to react. Yeah, it is mostly in their favor. Uh, Simp still has to play. Very carefully. Okay. And uh, if they make single mistakes there, it, and this this goes, so the same rules that applied to defense in the beginning, defense has the advantage, but it's very easy to make mistakes, and sure. those mistakes to add up and you to lose. Right. Uh, like you were saying, very astutely, by the way, as soon as Simp crosses into the buildings, <laughs> calm down, <laughs> we're just okay, getting started. Uh, as soon as Simp crosses into those buildings, that, that advantage flips around. Right. And then Simp has the advantage, but again, it's very easy for those little mistakes to add up hmm. and then game over to come back. I mean, simple bounces on, uh, on any tank can right. really start adding up, for especially as many autoloaders as you have. But uh, I think the battle has just come back. So it let's has. see if Simp does what they were planning on. Absolutely. And if everybody brings the same lineups. Ladies and gentlemen, we're into again our first battle after a quick restart from a DC game over versus Simp. David, what do we got for tanks? Two 5100s, three IS3s, a T54 lightweight, and a T37 for a game over. Simp with a 5100, three IS3s, two T54 lightweights, and a VK2801. Now that I think about it, I don't even think it's possible for them to actually change lineups in between this. I think it's in the rules, at least it used to be. Okay. But if you have a disconnect, you can't you can't meta adjust your lineup. So you can't use that as a tactic to spy on your enemy sure. and then change things. So I believe, uh, given this lineup, that we will see Simp come out with exactly what they were planning on before. Yep. I hope so. Uh, that's typically a very good example of uh, one of the best ways to cap on this map, to uh, assault on this map. Mm. And it'll be definitely exciting to watch. Yeah. Like you said, they're just go ahead and heading toward that northern cap. Um, you did em emphasize how this this tactic needs to be executed quickly. So any sort of pauses, any sort of tanks that aren't moving. Uh, uh, I mean, how, uh, what is their time frame, right? If, if you like, we're saying don't want to go too meta and just wait here for a while. How how quickly must they get on this cap and send those uh, tanks? over toward Gandorfo and game over. Well, to answer the, the specific question of what is their time frame, uh, I would say their time frame is uh, now. <laughs> so they're, they're coming across as quickly as possible. Uh, so what they're trying to bank on is game over going a little bit too far down the zero line to make sure they aren't there okay. and taking advantage of that before game over comes back. However, game, forward, game over hasn't pushed too far forward and they're still in position to handle Simp. Uh, Simp, however, is on cap already. Yeah. They've got a nice little cover. That's why they brought the 2801. Okay. okay that is a beefy little light tank for the points to cover that assault. They can fit an IS-3 behind it. I like that a lot. Oh, uh, that's okay. I was, I was like, what? you're seeing something I'm not, but I understand. So the tank size is really nice because you can fit two people in that corner instead of just one. 
Yes. Um, that is that is a very well. Smart. It's not even just two people. They're fitting a whole IS three behind him, and he is very hard to penetrate in that position. In the past, you're covering, you know, either using like 50 or 100 or something huge for it. But uh, actually, uh, let's hold on a little bit. We got a little bit of damage starting to crank out here. Maybe Absolutely. this will get interesting, but only eight seconds left on half. Yeah, this is looking amazing for Simp as the game over is finally going to run in there. Gandorfo gets that reset. Now down to 20 seconds as he's going to take a little bit of damage but make it out safely. That was a great little time bought for them. Another reset comes out. A good amount of damage on a light tank. Looks like Gandorfo might look to finish this up as you just kind of try to run around and spot these team members. Now we see Heish moving into the city. And Frank Orange with a nice shot takes Crimson out in that, uh, in that light tank, the one that we were, we were trying to bank on the ingeniousness of it with the IS-3 behind him. It is gone now. Now the IS-3 sits by itself. The rest of Simp just hanging back, maybe waiting for Heist to come in for for a flank. What what, what do you do in Simp? Do you say hope that this, this continues and that game over pushes into you, or or do you try to switch it up at this point, or is it, is it just too late? Oh, Simp is sitting pretty. They, they have the wreck of that 2801 still in the way. Drynitz is accumulating points in his IS-3. Provided Gandorfer doesn't get this reset, it's going to be Simp's game. Absolutely, Gandorfer is trying to find Drynitz as he's going around. It looks like he's going to come from behind him. He's going for the reset. Eight seconds left. Will he get the shot? He does. He gets, he gets exploded himself. He gets the reset, but sacrifices his life for it. Now, David, would you, think, would you say that was worth it? For, for game over? Yeah, if they didn't do that, they would have lost. I was about to lose my mind right there. I, the big question is, how Simp let Gandorfo get in that close? I mean, I, I saw they were a little bit occupied, but that was a gigantic mistake to this strategy. That we're running. Wow, absolutely. Right, it's going to run as Enrique Dante. He's coming in, taking a good amount of damage. Game over looks like they want to just push in on this. Uh, the IS-3 now fighting it off as Enrique Dante going to try to get some crossfire. Nitz running it from the side, but game over only at five tanks to the six of Sim. Again, being on defense, they're not the ones who have to push it, but looks like these ISUs just kind of go head to head, butting it out with a little brawl here. Here comes the rest of Sim pulling around, and Drox is followed by Nitz, but Drox is getting punished for just showing himself for a second. Taking over 700 points of damage, Orn picking up Overload Prime. Sim going down, falling left and right, with game over not being responded to. As a Drox is taking some good amount of damage out on this corner. They just keep getting that reset, and now it is just total finish. Getting, a, getting a bounce off of BR game over in that IS-3. Just that tanky, tanky, tank flying through here. Looks like they're going to need some a little bit of damage. Finally on game over. There's a couple of shots thrown to finish from the sides. Nitz taking a little bit of return, but now a 4-4. Four four in favor of Sip. Game over now. One shot away. Drynitz taking a look at half. Photo finish is going to finish game over off. Now Sip in the lead here. Mega taking a good amount of damage. Coming through. Photo finish is trying to push around this corner. Enrique Dante and Mega on the side. Getting some shots off of Photo Finish. Photo Finish not quite connecting. And we have Orange back here in this position. Looking good for Sip, David. Absolutely, dry nits, nits, photo, all stepping up in this corner to handle Mega Minero and Enrique Dante. Enrique one shot away with very low amount of hit points. Simp is going to take this. Okay. They, they very well take They very well should take this. But however, it is getting very close, Christian. Yeah, right. It's good to find the Ricky Dante. Drek taking down Phono Finish. It is now three on four. Simp cleaning up these members of Game Over. As the four one shots, but we have an amazing Drek here in Orange. They, they take down Drynitz so quickly. Nitz is only one shot away, but they're coming out in order to on the Rito. Brodus is going to go for maybe a little bit of ram damage. Not quite. He has one shot. He does get it off right before Orange can shoot Brodus. And now it's a one on two. Drak Hero just left for game over. Sam pushing in. Nitz missing the shot. One shot himself. Drak just on the run here. We're going to see Sim. going to go ahead and chase him because on the defense, Drak is just going to go ahead and look for survival here. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, Drac was reloading. He didn't really have anywhere else to go. But I'm not entirely sure running away was the best move he could have had here. He could have really gambled that maybe wow. Simp didn't know he wasn't loaded and just try and scare him. Hope he could buy some time until, until he was loaded to handle Simp because that was a winnable match, albeit uh, not particularly likely. I really like that 2801 play. Yeah. Uh, the way they used that in the position, although it started to backfire a little bit on him. <laughs> when, uh, when I think it was... Uh, uh, one of the IS-3s from Game Over came, came up, up and they were actually using it from both different <laughs> from both sides. And it's yeah. like, well, now <laughs> your 2801 is my 2801. <laughs> right, and right. I don't it's think you're going to cap. You definitely can't cap at that distance. One HE shell like through that area can reset. Sure. Um, very good distraction. 
by mm. game over, I guess, uh, causing the backfield for Simp to miss Gandorfo as he came in for that reset. Yeah. But that was one of the closest and most clutch resets I've seen in a long time. We come in around that corner. I know I, for a moment you were saying, was it worth it? Yeah, you were saying it was absolutely worth it. He, gets, he only gets seven damage off, but he got the reset, which was great. He sacrificed his life for it, but he allowed his team to, to – you know, to have another chance at it. Unfortunately, it didn't go well for them. Simp does come out on top. Um, but it was really fun to see those two tanks kind of huddled down there, putting that pressure so much quicker probably than usual with just a one tank. Now, do you think we're going to see Simp do that again? It did work for them. Or do you think maybe they'll expect that game over will expect that? Uh, you know, they could go either way on this. They could break out some sort of also, you know, interesting um, southern cap maneuver. Or they could just say that they came very close and with a little bit better focus fire. Oh uh, well, I mean they won with it. It's not just not just <laughs> close, but it came very they, close they to working it. the way it was intended to work. Yeah. Um, and uh, which is to cap completely. I mean, let me back up a little bit. Anytime you put on cap pressure, you're not just intending to only cap. You're intending to either cap or make them come after it and pay too much to stop you. Sure. So it worked the way it was intending to work. But I'm talking about the flawless, you right. know, the way it almost worked. <laughs> That's right. the word right. I'm looking there for. There you go. And uh, I think. I think they may try it again. I don't really see why they wouldn't. Yeah. Um, aside from, uh, really, it's it's now or never. I mean, you give it a, you give teams enough time, and they're going to know how to handle it from here on out. Sure. But uh, it's a very hard thing to stop. That twenty eight oh one, it's just a huge, huge cover. I yeah. mean, typically you're seeing much smaller tanks be used for that maneuver. Okay. And an IS three bunkering down behind a twenty eight oh one is a very vicious pretty, thing to assault. Pretty genius. That's, that's very smart. Absolutely. Now, now coming from that similar standpoint, let's say that Simp does do that same tactic, putting those two on the cap and the rest behind him to protect the flank. How would Game Over uh, respond to that? Push more in the city? Be more aggressive? I mean, wh what's the proper response to a setup as Simp had? I mean, typically in the past, you had no real problem resetting that position. Um, you could, you know, if you want to get really cheeky, you can fire an HE against the wall next to where the IS-3 was. Try to explode it. And it, it does enough to reset if you get sure. lucky. With the right tank, some tanks can't do it. Uh, in the past, it, it hasn't been particularly hard to do. Uh, definitely going through the city could be a good idea, but I think that net mass is starting, so is. we might as well see exactly what they're up to. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. We're into our second match, Game Over versus Sim. Sim taking the first on attack. Game Over on defense. David, what do we got for lineups? 250 100s, three eyes, threes, and a T54 lightweight for, oh, and a T37 for game over. Simp going a little bit lighter, a 5100, an IS3, a 1390, three T54 lightweights, and a 2801. That, that, actually, that same lineup could go north. However, from what I'm seeing, they are going south. Yep. But that was uh, what I felt was kind of one of the key components that was missing from their last push was a, a light tank group pushing all the way through to 8-6 and, and just making sure that nobody had those direct shots. But I'm very intrigued to see where they're going with this right now. Game over still has two tanks in the north waiting for that same play. And I don't think they've spotted mm. Simp yet. Absolutely. Highest looking like he was the man trying to spot him. But as you said, no one's spotted yet. Photo photo finish and Nitsk heading over here, going to go ahead and get a nice little position to see if all the members of Game Over who are just hiding in that town, five members uh, against those two of Simp right there. But they have backup along this eastern side. Uh, now, looking from Simp, we see in this, in this play, they're all moving together as a single unit. Is this something that we see a lot on Runeberg? Uh, teams not quite splitting up, just going on attack, just going one way altogether. Um, or is this, or is this, is this something new that we've seen? Th this is pretty normal. Uh, you either on Runeberg on offense, you either have to go north or south. You can't really spend a whole lot of points or a lot of tanks uh, in another location because then it creates an easy isolation for the enemy team. They gotcha. just push more tanks on on your smaller group, uh, and they win. And that's it's very simple. Right now, Simp is uh, using that 2801 very interestingly. Looks like they're actually starting to send him around behind. Mm -hmm. And I expect to see some cap pressure coming out soon. Simp in some very solid positions, though. Anyway, like you said, pointing out that Game Over has Gandorfo and Game Over up there in that north still, just waiting on that northern cap. Um, uh, here we go. Here's the cap pressure, sending two members on. Like I said, let's see how Gandorfo and Game Over are going to react. It looks like they're just staying still for now. Um, but the rest of the team from Game Over is going to be in that town trying to pop out. They do have a little bit of time before the resets come. We're starting to see the IS-3s move through. And Drox is though getting set up, getting ready for anything. A little shot comes through, just missing. Don't know if that was blind fire or if Henrique Dante was spotted. Um, Mega moving around here, They're trying to get the little setup. But Crimson in the town. Looks like Gandorfer and Crimson are also going to meet over there in the city. Oh, I'm looking for 
forward and back. Crimson knows Gandorfo is coming. He is waiting for this. T2801. Whoa! 444. Wow. That was a lot of damage coming out through there. 13 seconds now on the cap. Game over. Gonna have to make a reset quick. It looks like they're not having anyone to set up. Megan pushing through. There it is. Photo finish gets in. The resets come through over on the side for game over. Simtho maintain those positions. Gonna get into the cover fire on their teammates as they cap good damage on Heist there. 408 coming out on that T54. The R game over gets a shot on Nitz, res uh, resetting the cap again. But Crimson finds Gandorfo in the city. Like we're saying, what a beautiful play. He definitely expected that was going to come, and he was there before, uh, you know, before Gandorfo really knew what was happening. Absolutely, and that's going to be a huge, huge situation for Crimson. Or for Simp, as Crimson comes up over the top and can do a lot of damage to pretty much anybody in that tank. Still a whole lot of action going on. A 1,400 HP advantage to wow. Simp. This is yeah. starting to begin to snowball. Yeah, Zip is sitting pretty here as Heist goes down from Androxus over the corner. We have a few members who are healthy for game over in these towns, but overall, not a single tank down for Simp. This is a great amount of pressure that Simp has, being the attackers, uh, maybe just looking for one more tank and going for the overmatch. They have gotten off the cap, so the pressure has subsided there. Crimson still sitting in the city, um, but overall, Simp is very spread out, not rushing in. Looks like they're going to go ahead and Go for the the pressure now. Photo and Nitz back on together. Those battle buddies driving around together. Those T54s. Game over. Looking for Androxus. His turn. His turn. Androxus on the reload in the IS3. What, what is what does Game Over ideally have to do here to to, to gain this victory? Over Sim? Well, they got to take line. out Androxus. Yeah, and looks like they're about to do that. 700 over 700 damage comes out. A good chunk going out there. He didn't do a lot in return. Some fire coming covered from Brodus over there. There he goes, Androxus goes out, game over, but game over gets taken out by Overload Prime in response. A one for one here, and 20 seconds left on this cap. We have the pressure coming out very nicely, and the rest of the members from game over all in this town. Not looking good as Simp knows where they are, knows that all four are there, and they have to pop out now, or Simp will take this. Here they we go. Here we go. And right, Henry Gadante going out for that game. A shot misses from Bonus. Three shots going out, not hitting. Finally, look at it. But Bonus is getting a good amount of damage, but finding Henry Gadante on the reload now. One more shot, but it hits the rock, and Brodus is going to walk away with one, with one more shot. He, he unloads. He's on the reload now. Overload Prime there, one shot away. But Simp with just three members remaining and 14 seconds on this clock. Omega and Drek trying to pop out and get the resets. Not quite successful. Orange missing, a, uh, getting a shot. Fly right by him without hitting. Here he comes. Let's see if he can get the reset on this IS-3. They're going to need this. They, they do get it, but Drek is the one to pick it up. Photo finish taken down a little bit. Orange gets tracked here as Overload Prime is going to go. So one Looks like they're moving in, trying to find him. Drake taking a lot of damage. One more shot comes out from him. He's going to go down. Sip looking at a good three seconds. Two more seconds on this clock. They need to get a reset. They get three reset. But Mega goes down for it. Only three members alive. Four game over. Two as Crimson picks up Drac Hero. Mega now one more shot away. Nitz looks like he's going to get the shot. But it bounces. But Overload Prime is there to pick it up. One more game over. And that is Orange. They're moving in. Dry Nitz picks up that kill, and one more game going out for Simp there. D David, walk me through, just as we saw at the beginning. I just want to point out the fact, as we saw, uh, was it Crimson who went into the city to meet Gandorfo as he was coming down? So they expected Gandorfo to, to make that move once they put the, the pressure on the Western Cap? Absolutely. Uh, Crimson was planted. He wasn't just driving up to, you know, see what was going on. He was waiting for somebody to come that way. And there was a very high damage shot that he ripped out on the T-37 Gandorfo to open that up. And then there wasn't even a point almost to watching that for the rest of it because it was very obviously going to go to Crimson. Mm -hmm. Crimson uh, had a very strange position from that point forward, I felt. He had some ability to shoot down the F-line, and he stayed okay. there for possibly a little bit too long. With the Gandorfo down right. and all of those tanks lit, there's no reason not to drive up through the northern cap and either put oh. pressure on it or start firing into where Drag Hero was from behind. It's sure. uh, There's a lot of like really troll places you can go, and you can be basically invisible while you do it. He eventually saw it. Um, you know, I don't know if that's him making that personal decision or if he's being directed to do it or whatnot. Uh, I think he was expecting Drac to actually drive across and create a little bit more of aggressive movement at the time. Okay. But once it started to stagnate, it's a hard decision. 
sure. when you're in that position because it's like, well, if I go and he and then he goes, right? Like I'm way out of position. <laughs> yeah. But if I stay here and he doesn't go, then then I'm not doing anything. <laughs> right. And it's a it's a hard call every time you make it. But very great play coming out from the uh, the combination of Nitz and Photo Finish and those T54 lightweights. Battle buddies just uh, all the way back and forth. Adroxus in the IS3 doing a lot of bullying, really controlling that map and trying it's Easy living, sitting in the back in his AMX 1390. Just picking off those shots. Just just dumping shots. In <laughs> fact, let me check the stats real quick, because sure. he probably did a boatload of damage. And actually, actually, top damage goes to Adroxus with nearly 2,000 wow. while frontlining wow. it. Wow. And, uh, Good for him. He actually only blocked about 750, which oh. is surprising to me, because I would have thought he got shot more than that, but apparently he is just slick. <laughs> and he was, he was just, sh you know... <laughs> like ducking all those shots, it's man. Boss. It's really easy to dodge an IS-3. It's a very nimble tank, so I think. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that will be uh, two victories for a simp. We're going to switch sides here, and we're going to be into our third battle on Ruinberg. Game over versus simp. David, let's take a look at what we got for the lineups. Game over on offense this time. 150-100, four IS-3s, an AMX 1390, and a T-37. Wherever they're going, they're not moving after that. <laughs> simp, a 110 two AMX 5100s, an IS-3, two T-54 lightweights, Boy, and a T-37. Uh, that is a much more flexible lineup. I think I think that is uh, exactly what I might bring on this map, in fact. Uh, the 110 is a, is a great choice over the IS-3 in this situation in particular. The front armor, and, and just kind of, kind of in general, the hatch is uh, a lot harder to pen than the IS-3, at least in my experience. Perhaps it has changed a little bit. But it's a very strong tank. It's got a little bit more view range. Uh, it fires a little bit faster. And in this situation on defense, that's really what you're after. Unless you're packing a lot of IS-3s, mm. the, the, they have diminishing returns, right? Or, uh, or the opposite. You don't have enough of them, their whole purpose starts to diminish. Where you need like three to really front load on somebody correctly. But a 110 is perfectly, perfectly fine in this situation. And it looks like game over is already on cap in the north, making a strong play. Yeah, they have two members on cap there. Uh, as we see Simp now finally reacting, sending Crimson through the city yet again. But Heish is going to be there to block him. Uh, and we'll see if that, in the IS-3, we'll see how much damage the T-37 can do there. Uh, as we're going to go ahead and see, we get a nice reset on Gandorf there. We got a lot of damage on Gandorf. And Gandorf actually goes down, and Droxus finds the kill. And that is not looking good for game over there. Actually, that is all according to plan, Christian. Oh, uh, so the that shield. is. Yeah, exactly. It's oh. the same thing, except they're doing it with a T-37 instead of a 2801. And that, that was the beauty of what Simp was doing last time. The 2801 is a bigger tank. As you can see, oh, that was a beautiful shot. I don't know if you can see it down there in the bottom left of your screen. Photo finish squeaked in a shot right in front of Drag Hero underneath the cannon of the T-37 <laughs> and over oh, the wow. hole. That is accuracy. Wow. And uh, if Drag Hero had been there, that would have been a strong reset. Now, Drac in a 1390 is simultaneously a better and worse cap pressure tank for this situation. The IS-3 for Simp was larger, right. but the 2801 covered it. It's got a little bit better, well, not a little bit, it's got better armor. And uh, it's much harder, or it's much harder to penetrate it when he's sitting behind there. However, this 1390 is smaller. He can sit further back, and that, so it's like a smaller picture. Uh, unless his gun got shot. <laughs> that is, <laughs> that, that was, fortunate. that was brilliant. He hit him in the gun. Wow. I, don't, I don't think he hit him anywhere else. What a shot from Vince there to get that reset. Photo going to go ahead and track these shots. Now, would you think that this is game over, taking what Simp has done and, and applying it themselves? Or does this seem as if uh, Simp, uh, game over had this plan even before Simp executed it first? Oh, I mean, this has been around for years. This, this is one of the classic ways to assault the North. Uh, back in the days when there wasn't even a south cap and it was pretty much only a north cap, uh, well, m we're not even going to get into the old days. It's not worth talking about. <laughs> 754 is a superior format at this point. Yeah, but this has been around for a long time. Uh, Simp trying to get some unique, or sorry, not unique, but good positions to flank around game over. Uh, game over could theoretically just ball up and go right through and just pave Simp to the ground if they saw this. Yeah, absolutely, and it seems uh, game over. Uh, the player, not the team, uh, Pretty low on health there, but he is just sitting back. Photo finish trying to pop out, get some shots, not finding any connect yet. Crimson Overlord with some members of Simp, like you said, pushing in for this uh, flank. No one, none been spotted yet. Photo finish the only one who's spotted on the side of Simp. Heist just sitting back there, waiting for Overlord Prime and Brodus to push through. 35 seconds now on this cap. 
Uh, like you said, oh, Androxus is now spotted. We'll see if game over goes ahead and pushes. Botafin is trying to get a little more aggressive, maybe for game over. Uh, taking some damage from Orange there. Taking some damage from game over as well. He is looking for that shot. He gets the shot, but not quite enough damage. Look, he's going to run through. He gets tracked. Quick repair as he's moving 402, 12. Let's see if he can get around Drac here. But no, game over takes him down before he can get the shot. Uh, 14 seconds on this cap. They're going to go ahead and need to get these as we have a member from Simp trying to go around. And Drax is picks up Nitz, trying to get the reset. He finally does just in time as Drac now trying to focus on Nitz. Nitz, one more shot away. Oh, or for low row, he's two more shots away from Drac Hero. Broad is finding Heish in the IS3, though. Coming through, it seems as if Simp is now responding. Going to go or game over responding to Simp pushing through here. Uh, Brodus going through. Mega Minergo finds a kill on Crimson. Dragon's and Drax is coming out of the way. Brodus taking a lot of damage here from Enrique Dante. And he goes down. Enrique Dante finding that kill on Brodus. The response from Dragon's onto Drac Hero is going to look good for Simp. Nitz going to go ahead and get one more shot next on Prime. Dragon's find the kill on Orange. And game over is just falling to Simp here. That was one of the strangest things I have ever seen. Where did that come from? <laughs> so, the the flank that Simp had set up there was was great. Uh, you know, it's, it's nothing particularly new, which sure. is not a, it's not a criticism. I mean, if, it's, if it's if it ain't broke, don't, don't fix, fix it. it. There you go. Uh, so, uh, I mean, it's something that was expected. Game over should have been a little bit more aggressive there. Basically, uh, as soon as they weren't seeing any real attempt, they, they need to have somebody back to make sure they're not getting flanked. Sure. That's what it comes down to. And they only brought one light tank uh, to this to this fight. And that is, that is, is. Their, one of their biggest problems. Actually, so they brought two, but the T-37 apparently didn't cover them well enough. Hmm. Uh, what, what was very confusing to me was Photo Finish pushing across the road and dying before he really had any backup. Right. A and, you know, conceptually, he would push and he would take, like, the first volley okay. from the eyes threes and grab everybody's attention. And then, and then the flank dying. comes in. Sure. And it's just game over right, right. then and there. Well, game over for game over. Yeah. Why why do you do this to me? <laughs> uh, but I, I guess it was just mistiming. And that's that's super common. It's really easy. It doesn't okay. matter how much you practice something. Right. Uh, you can have a most super efficient communication system and everything. But sometimes it just happens where, you know, for some reason somebody can't push. Like they're still reloading or something yeah. like that. Or, or, I don't know, they spilled a drink. Who knows? <laughs> but all I know is I saw Crimson or sorry, photo, push across the road and die right. for very little reason. Uh, clutch reset coming out on Drac Heroes 1390. Yeah, that's And great. other than that, some great play. In particular, I saw Overlord Prime uh, doing a lot of shucking and jiving <laughs> in that T-54 lightweight, <laughs> which I love. And I really kind of just wanted to use the phrase shuck and jive. Good, you did it. You can check that off your list now. Great now success. For for, uh, for photo finisher pushing, like you said, without really having uh, uh, a good second plan, a good reason to do it, was he perhaps maybe going for that reset um, with that that he failed to do because he died so quickly? Because it seems as if he was running around that corner, maybe trying to get a shot off. Uh, but you th you were just saying that there was a maybe a more successful way or a, a better way of handling that. Uh, I don't know if there's necessarily a better way to handle it. I mean, they, they're pushing in so many light tanks. Sims pushing in so many light tanks from behind that as soon as they you know have uh, anybody free any of the light tanks, they can go right back and make sure they get that reset. I don't think they're super worried about the reset, but I do think you were right. I think it was Photo Finish's job to get across that road, yep. and at all costs, you know. <laughs> he'll probably reset. get lit up, and he'll get there with 10%, but he'll squeak in one shot on Drac, sure. and that'll, that's all good. that'll matter. Plus, he pulled all the rest of the shots at everybody else who was in that lane, right. which really opens up that flank for success. Um, but he just got ripped up. He did and it quickly. That is, that is not ideal. <laughs> <laughs> so we have game over now, 0-3 uh, to Simp. Again, on this final battle we have coming on Ruinberg. Uh, do you think that game over is going to try something new uh, or maybe go for uh, a different cap, maybe go for that northern cap uh, instead of the western one? Or uh, you know, like we saying, if it ain't broke, no fix it. Well, that didn't quite work for them. And again, getting 4 0 going into a match is a lot of pressure and it's not good. Do you think they're going to try to switch it up here? Or is this going to maybe see that same tactic again? You know, we've already attempted uh, predicting game over before. <laughs> and, and they like to, they and they to be confusing, cliff. at least for me. Uh, I, if I were them, I would abandon what they were doing. Uh, or, or, you know, they really have to be more aggressive when they do it. Hmm. Uh, again, pushing across to A6 is risky, but it's one of the most important parts about that whole that whole strategy that right they're through. trying to pull. Yeah, as, as soon as you see the window, or immediately, you push across. Now, if the, if the rest of the team is sitting there waiting for you, if your defender's sitting there waiting for you, it can be 
It can be bad, but uh, we'll see what they're going for as I believe the match is starting right now. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, we're into a game over versus Simp. Game over going to be on the attacking again. Great David, what we got for lineups? Game over has a 5100, three IS3s, a Waffle. Yay! Waffentrager, Roomba, whatever you want to call it. An AMX 1390 and a T37. Now, a Waffle's a very strange choice on offense for me. But I can think of a couple places they could be. It, it definitely indicates they're going northwest okay. um, to me. And I think Simp is probably just going to clear out the east and, and probably move a bunch of tanks back because it's going to be pretty obvious. Uh, Simp's running a 110, 250, 100s, an IS-3, two T-54 lightweights, and a T-37. They've got all the flex they need to handle what um, Game Over is bringing right now. But Simp is drastically out of position. Mm. Yeah, we Some see. sort of juggling going on. Yeah, as uh, Game Over is applying that cap pressure now, 45 seconds already, they have two members going to go ahead and here, and Simp is reacting. They're saying there's two members who are down south back up to the north as quickly as possible. And Dox is coming in on the IS-3. Crimson again going for that city flank. It worked for him last time. We'll see if it could work for him this time. Photo finish coming in. Looks like they're going for the same positions, the same setup as last time. It looks like this is going to be a repeat. Game Over is definitely going to try what they tried before, but with a little bit more uh, firepower behind it. And Ooh. Simp wisely not performing the same response. It looks like they're bringing more light tanks yep. Yep. to the northeast, and they're just going to push it straight through. Uh, with Crimson down where he is, it's sort of a fake down there in the southwest. It's going to draw some fire from Game Over and open up that northeastern push. This is really smart. Uh, I hope they go through with it. Yeah, it seems that Simp, uh, or Game Over, by doing the same tactic, Simp is now just going to improve on the fact of what they already won and just maybe do it a little bit better this time. Um, we see Brodus over there in that corner. Again, not as pushed up as last time. Uh, Game Over getting a shot on photo finish. Nothing connecting yet. Over the Prime and Nitz going to push off together here as this three-man is going right for Drac Hero. This is extremely aggressive. Two shots and Game Over with that miss, and Nitz getting some response. They get the reset on uh, Drac Hero as Overload Prime and Nitz now have him cornered, and we have a tank keeping Mega Meteor from really helping his teammate out at all. Nitz and uh, Drac Hero in this little alleyway duking it out. Nitz really low on health. He's one more shot down, getting the reset, and Drac Hero is going to take him down as Nitz just falls in the alleyway. Uh, they pushed them off the cap, but that's a loss. That's a one tank down for Simp, and it's now even six to six. Well, it's only a matter of time until Overlord Prime sneaks in there and kills Drac Hero. I'm actually wondering why he hasn't done it yet. Either he hasn't been counting the shots. Oh, here we go. He was a little bit worried about that <laughs> that Waffentrager, as he should be. However, yep. now he has an easy kill. And from here on out, Simp doesn't have to do anything. Although Brodus, pretty far out of position there in the F line for where the rest of Simp is. Hmm. Yeah, as we see that Waffle doing a good amount of damage, uh, Orange there, and that Waffle back there, now he's backing out, but not enough to save his teammate. Uh, good damage coming on to Brodus, but like you said, we have a massive advantage for Simp, who's on defense. Game over are the ones who eventually have to make the move, and we see them just getting cornered here. Simp is doing a great job and kind of corralling them back here into this, this uh, eastern part of the city. One of the downsides to the Waffle, which Orange Cataphract is driving there at B2, is it doesn't really shift very well, and it certainly can't defend itself. It'll die quick to mm. pretty much anything here. So game over is kind of stuck. However, finally, here we go. Nice, strong counter push coming out, isolating Brodus. Absolutely. This is great for game over. This is exactly what they needed. They want to have a chance in the NBA. Game over does find Brodus. What a pickup for game over on game over to find this, uh, to almost this breathing room as they're now to kind of push out of the city. Crimson backing off here. Heish looks like he does want to continue this push to try to find him. Uh, but B Game Over just going to sit back on this corner. And we have some damage coming up on Drynitz over here on the uh, on the northern cap. They're pushing into the city. Looks like this is the response that Simp is going to look for onto the side. The Waffle taking a mass, or they have 5100. And Ringa Dante taking a massive amount of damage. Mega Merno and Drynitz duking it out here. Drynitz does get the shot off, getting just a quicker reload. But BR Game Over with a good response taking him out. Just the one for one there. Uh, the teammates helping the teammates. Game over and Simp. Look at the health. Game over with a, a massive health advantage. And Simp and Ricky Dante finding Crimson. This is looking amazing for Game Over. Looks like they just turned it on. They found that opening, and they're going to go ahead and keep pressing this uh, and pushing back into this cap. The three members of Simp, two very low, and Photo finish about half health. Photo is in a dangerous position right now, and it's not a bad position, but against two IS3s, he's going to be focused fire mm. down. Fairly quickly, what a Overlord shot. Prime going down to the war, the Borsin. That Waffle's digging the mass amount of damage, taking out that 
tank from game or from the sim and Drox is now trying to do what he can. Vota finish, like you said, not in the best position against two IS threes. One more shot and he will go down. Looks like Heish is gonna get it. Enrique Tante picks it up from the back there. And one final tank remaining from Simp. Game over. Gonna take this one. The question is, who will it be? Orange in the waffle. Oh, my man. A man after my own heart. David, walk me through. It looked like Simp had that. It looked like they were in such a strong position. And game over. What, what, what did they do when they reacted what, the way they did in that push down in the city? That, th that whole thing was more awkward than a middle school dance, Christian. Uh, and like, <laughs> Those they were awkward. <laughs> Simp, Simp pushed in from the Northeast uh, very intelligently. But yeah. for some reason, they had Brodus, I guess, coming in for some sort of flank. But once Simp managed to push out, uh, I think it's Drac Heroes 1390, and yep. get him down, and they had the Northeast cap controlled, that was it. Mm. They didn't have to go anywhere. Sure. And for some reason, they kept pushing, and they kept offering up tanks for isolation. I would have pulled out everything right then and there. Right. And just been like, well, there goes your 1390, and I'm on cap. Come at me, bro. Okay. But they just continuously gave opportunities for Game Over to come back. And, and as, again, as awkward as it was, as strange, exactly. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> exactly. I just can't think of a better, better image than that. As uh, Game Over eventually found their way, killed Brodus. Yeah. Uh, Crimson going down from a great shot by Henrique Dante. Way in the back. Was one of the most important things there. Okay. Once they once Game Over knew they didn't have anybody behind them to plink them and cause those problems and shoot them as they were driving around. Yeah. They grabbed everything. They moved up. Photo finish was too far forward for how little uh, tanks they had left. And it mm -hmm. wouldn't have been a bad spot had they had more backup behind them. Right. But in that situation, you can't stop two IS-3s coming sure. in like that. Not unless you have several 5100s or a lot of sustained firepower. Or, or maybe if the Borsig was on the other side. But I'm not a fan of the Borsig in general. However, <laughs> I think it did a lot of damage this match. Hmm. Um, let me check that out. Yeah. Well, so BR Game Over, confusingly named, <laughs> uh, he actually cranked out the most with nearly 2600. Wow. The Borsig, in eight shots, hit five, penetrated five. Nearly 2,000 damage. That's my waffle. That That is a lot. <laughs> that was worth bringing. Photo finish doing the most for Simp with nine shots, eight hits, seven penetrations. That is a f very respectable uh, yeah. ratio there for nearly 2,300. Virtually everybody else in that list lacking in comparison. Wow. And uh, it's... It's not rocket science. You look at the stats v. stats, and one side did more damage and Game therefore over. won. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be into our second map of our second match of Game Over versus Simp. We're on steps here. So, David, why don't we take it away? What do we got for tanks? For Game Over, we have six T-54 lightweights and a T-37. All right. <laughs> that can work. That can work in pretty much you know almost any map if you know what you're doing. Uh, I think a little bit more diversity is probably ideal, but we've seen what they've done with this in the past. They're not bringing their 1390s. I'm, I'm interested to see, but it's probably going to be an Eastern push again. Simp with a T32, five T54 lightweights, and a T37. Uh, that is, Simp has an advantage here. They're in. They're defending. They have a better tank for defense, and other than that, they're virtually identical. Uh, game over going heavily East. Absolutely. And we see, uh, looking at the lineup, there's no autoloaders for either side of the team. Is there a specific reason for this? Or is this, just pl does this come down to play style of each each player or the, the, the comp they're running or, or the map they're on? Uh, because we have seen autoloaders in here before, but not a single one for both these teams. You know, that is a very, very good question. On this map, single shots are typically better. But it depends. If you can get on top of the other team uh, in a mismatch, then the 1390s are great. But... Playing against a team like Simp, I wouldn't necessarily rely on that. It's very easy to either kill the tank that has an autoloader immediately, and, and almost all autoloaders have significantly worse armor than, say, a T-54. Okay. So they're not likely to bounce. So they're very easy to isolate and kill. Um, unless you create a proper opportunity for them, wow. they're just not particularly great. Oh. Game over squandering a, a unique opportunity here, and they're just waiting. <laughs> Crimson Corsair has already spotted them. Yeah, and, and or has he? Uh, and no, it doesn't like a single member of Game Over has been spotted. I don't know if Crimson is spotted either. This is a very interesting move here. Now they're all pushing up. They're going to find Crimson. He's going to be in a lot of trouble. Uh, we have a little bit of damage coming on Heist, but Crimson does get out of there. And they, every single member spotted. Now Simp knows that Gandorfo is all by himself in the cap. Gandorfo obviously knowing this as well as he decides to get off. Uh, what an interesting play. I've not seen that from Game Or I've not seen that style from Attacker uh, this season. 
I'm not entirely sure what they were intending to do. Uh, oh, maybe no. perhaps catch a tank going around the south, like Crimson. But uh, better positions for that, if you ask me. Wow. Uh, however, I guess it plays out in the sense that Adroxus was alone, didn't have any support, and they managed to pick him off. So who am I kidding? <laughs> Apparently Game Over knows better than I do in this situation. <laughs> uh, good, great. Great play. Absolutely. Just a little too far pushing. Now Crimson's going to get sandwiched here by Gandover and Orange right on the center road. It seems like they know where he is. The turrets are turning toward his position. Uh, Brodus being spotted. There he is. Crimson spotted a good amount of damage coming out here. One more shot and he will go down. Not doing a lot in return. Gandover will, looks like he's going to not get it. Orange picks it up. And that is two now down for the side of Simp. Game over with a very good lead on the attacker. Absolutely. All they have to do now. And this is one of the easiest situations you could ever ask for on steps. Find out where the enemy is, take as little damage as possible on the way in, which you have a T-37 to do that for, and then just put all your tanks on theirs. Because other than that, your lineup is fairly the same, yeah. and you have more guns than them now. In fact, two more, which yeah. is going to matter a lot. lot of damage. You can ignore that T-32 entirely, because mm. he's irrelevant. As long as you're just focusing on whoever is the most open in that position, yeah. and you put every shot you got on them, oh, and you man. increase that cannon mismatch, and this game should go to game over. Yeah, look at this. We have entire members, all seven of game over, pushing in on Simp's location now, taking the defensive point, the spawn point of their enemies, and to go in and through Gandorfo, the only one splitting off. Uh, excuse me, who is down there by himself. Looks like Mega Man are taking a little bit of damage, but they're looking for photo finish. They're coming up over this hill. A little bit of shots come out. Nothing connecting quite yet. Photo taking a little bit. 116 damage. Not super significant from that T37 over there. Gandolfo uh, on the side being a little needle, but nothing much. Enrique Dante looks like he's making a very decisive push, but Mega taking a good amount of damage. He's trying to ruin your photo finish. Getting absolutely decimated as he goes through, but he finds a kill on Mega before going down. But some shots get missed. Some crossfire. He finally drops, but Heist is going to go down from that as well. Over the Prime finding that pickup now. A five on four, and Simp is starting to claw their way back through here. But we have game over. Going to go ahead and push it. Looks like we're having a brawl. Overlord and Broda taking a lot of damage. Rika Dante also taking some return. BR game over. Taking some. We have a bloodbath going through as Nitz is trying to find Enrique Dante. Who's one more shot? BR game over. Finds Overlord Prime. One more. There it goes. Nitz picks up Enrique Dante, and it's a three on four. Simp is trying to find anything they can, but Brodus is not looking healthy. He does go down. Nitz finds me again over, but Drac is the one to pick up Brodus for the final. It's a three on two. Gandorfo just kind of surrounding the back of Nitz there. Gandorfo goes down from Dryas in the side. What a great shot and pickup. Uh, he's in a nice little sniping position on that hill. We saw that dry, uh, from Drynitz, but now it's a 2v1. Drynitz just trying his best to hold on here. Getting a nice shot on Drac. Orange missing his shot, and Drynitz going to try to hold this hill. If he can hold this, this is going to look good for him. Drac going to try to push him around the side. Drynitz is holding his position. They are reloaded. Orange is getting there. Gets a good shot on Orange. They know he's down. Drac not quite pushing up on this. It's a 2v1, but the high ground does go for Simp. This is looking amazing. These full health, this full health tank for Simp versus the two almost one shots from game over. Simp in the lead as far as health goes and not looking bad for Drynitz. They're doing a little dance around this hill on top. Drynitz can win this. Drynitz is a great player. He's in great position. I don't know why Game Over is trying to push on him right now when they could be causing cap pressure and making him come out. Mm -hmm. This They're trying to give it to Drynitz right now. Several mistakes. Drynitz is just waiting for the first mistake in this situation. He will pounce on oh. top of it, take out one of these guys, probably with a shot and a combo ram at the same time. Wow. And then he's in significant position. As long as he does not get double tapped to open up this thing, Drynitz can and perhaps oh. will pull this out. What a game. And they, like you're saying, the cap pressure is not being applied, and the time is running out. So, Game Over going to have to do it here. Look at the maybe going to make, but Drynitz take the shot out. That's an amazing pickup here. And you're right. It looks like Drynitz is going to take it. He's running out of orange. He gets shot, but he's going to go for it. He will get the shot off. He gets one. He's down. He gets a ram. Orange on the reload. But the shot's going to come out. Not enough damage. Drynitz just needs one more take out. And he does. Drynitz picks up the win for Simp. An amazing turnaround. What a game. Drynitz. Wow. Wow. Walk me through that. Can you believe it? Woo! I don't know, man. So classic face hug to end that whole thing. That's what it's called. Front on front. And if you're a good team, you practice that kind of thing. That was game over. Serious mistakes there. They had a good oh, – they, they played a little bit crazy yeah. to start it out. And I, I think yeah. it threw Simp off. They didn't know exactly where they were going to go with it. Okay. And they, it worked. They got two oh. tanks. And Adroxus is one of their most important tankers. Oh. And they got him immediately yeah. and Crimson in the T-37. Mm -hmm. So then they're, so then Simp's in there and the they're just blind. Their T-32 goes down almost instantly. Yeah. Mega Monero took a lot of damage, didn't back out. Right. Mistake number one.
Well, mistake number two. <laughs> okay. Them coming in, game over coming in through the northeast, and then right. stopping? Gigantic mistake number one, playing? perhaps they mistake number one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. You have a huge advantage at that point. Right. No breaks. You Ooh. just go. You cannot wait in a situation like that. <laughs> yeah. Drynitz in the back. As soon as I saw him stop, I was looking at Drynitz's position, and I was like, Whoa, oh, this, oh. Could, this could get close. Okay. Good focus fire from Simp. Yep. Uh, a couple mistakes on both sides throughout that all chaotic brawl. <sighs> and then Drynitz in the end. Putting the, the whole team on his shoulders player. and yeah, carrying all this. the way through. Quite frankly, I, I've known Drynitz for a long time. <laughs> okay. uh, we were clan mates. Uh, huh. We practiced against him. Uh, I've always, I've always been a fan of his. And uh, yeah. game and Hammer Time, the team that has now folded into Simp. Simply Hammer. And as soon as I saw that matchup, in my head, I was like, Drynitz is, Drynitz is going to win this. Yeah. Drynitz knows, and he's, he's probably got a heart rate up a little bit. <laughs> But I don't think he's sweating it nah, nearly as much all. as I am watching it. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were like, ah! it was, oh, what an amazing energy. Fantastic. One thing I do want to point out, though, like you were saying, from game over, we had the two members. They were on attack. The one member where they know where Simp is, they could have just backed off, applied cap pressure. Why do you think they did? Did they, think, did they have the confidence of taking out Drynitz up there on the hill? Is that why they didn't go for the cap? It's a mistake. Okay. You know, overconfidence. Uh, I think they know better. So either, you know, it's just uh, just a failure to, to reason out the situation at the time, okay. or they just got ahead of themselves, because theoretically, you want to leave somebody back to defend the other one, right. and then right. send the other one up to pressure him. So you get those oh. shots, and you do it. But uh, just, wow. This is a fantastic Great game. Great job, Drynitz. Good job, Drynitz. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're into our seventh battle. Uh, Simp just needs to take one more on steps again. We got right to the game. David, what do we got for our tanks? So we have game over. Six T54 lightweights, T37. Simp, two T32s. Up and up, up in the beef a little bit. <laughs> Four T54 lightweights and a T37. You know, perhaps this is a little bit meta in the overall game situation itself. But Simp realizes that all they have to do, and, and granted, this is pretty obvious because they're on defense, but all they have to do is defend on this one. And I think they know that unless game over starts getting extremely aggressive on them, yeah. they're going to take it home on this one. Okay. Well, here we go. We have a push, ladies and gentlemen, into this valley on the east side from both teams. And they are spotted. And it seems like everyone kind of knows now what's going on. Game over rushing in, not quite stopping. Mega taking a little bit of damage, but they're not going to, they're going to keep pushing right for this valley as Androxus is going to take a good amount of fire from the sides. It's getting out of there, trying to go back, regroup with this team. And this is an aggressive push from Game Over here as they're just coming right up on top of this hill. It's going to be a bloodbath. Enrique Dante, the one to pop up, takes a good amount of damage. Minamiro getting absolutely focus fired down. Needs to back out of there, but Crimson on the other side. It was Gandorfo coming in from the side. Looks like he's in a nice little flank in him. But Sim and Game Over, shots going everywhere. Crimson looks like there's a target from Game Over. And now it's sort of subsided as Enrique Dante and Mega Minero need to get out of there. Mega not very healthy, but Crimson also on the side. Big Game Over gonna pop up, get some shots off of Brodus, finds Mega Minero. That's the first tank down for uh, Game Over. Sim finding that one and picking that one up. And Heish taking a good amount of damage too. This is not looking good for Game Over right now. Sim seems like they are dominating this. We have the two tanks over here chasing Gandorfo. Crimson does pick it up. And this is going swimmingly for Simp. Nice flank coming out from Brodus there on the zero line. Simp going through a classic mop-up routine. Wow, here we Nitz go. doesn't even care. Nope. Combo ram with photo finish to finish it off. Overlord Prime <laughs> sweeping around. And that oh, is it for game over. Simp saw that coming Woo! from a mile away. Like I was saying in the beginning, they knew Game Over had to get super aggressive. Yeah. If they watch the qualifiers, they know what Game Over's super aggressive move is. It's true. And it's, it's to true. plow the, the, the southeast. Now, I'm wondering a little bit why Game Over didn't bring the 1390s like they did before. Okay. Because in that situation, they with what well. they were doing, if they did a proper intro like they did with Enrique Dante in the past, okay. T-54 drives across, whatever, they turn some guns, those 1390s will come back Sitting hard. Back, shoot, right. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, that that is to say that Simp, did the ex would do the exact same thing in that situation. And right. honestly, having uh, played against Simp and Hammer Time and, and knowing that group fairly well, they probably would have seen those 1390s. They would have put like 132 kind of close to the south to see Kay. it coming. Everybody else would have been back trying to put as much distance in between the first time uh, game over gets spotted okay. and closing on that. But that was just it was a great game. Absolutely. Reiterating again, Drynitz. What a play. All I can awesome. All I can say is, oh, mom. Well, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> that'll do it for our battle with Game Over versus Sim. Sim taking it 5-1. to one. Up next, we have High Voltage versus Noble. Don't go anywhere. 
We'll be right back with match number three after this.